What is the orange light? That one. No, there's an orange light here. That one. Yeah. Uh, there's a problem with this. So it may be nothing serious. It may be the result of some job that someone was running, but we'll have a look at that. And um, if, if it's an underlying hardware error, we'll phone the supplier and we get a new part um, pretty much within the next day. And we can swap it in, as I said before. So we can have a look at this one if you want. Yeah, that's the red one. Red one. That's one device error. Uh, only one error, but it takes a second or serious second. It's red. If we lose power to the building, I mean, these things do happen. There are power cuts sometimes. Typically, what we would do is, well, the, the UPS first of all will absorb, say, five minutes. Well, often power comes back within five minutes. But after, I think it's five minutes, we would start to fairly aggressively turn off the compute nodes because they're what is using the huge amount of power and because it doesn't really matter if we um, break the file system by unmounting cleanly any of that kind of stuff because when um, we bring it back online each of the compute nodes is re-imaged and reinstalled again so when we turn them on automatically that happens every time it's reprovisioned it's called what's more critical is powering down the storage cleanly because that can cause more problems so that's what we would then turn off rather than uh, virtually yank the power out of and by doing that that then gives us uh, we go from something like um, I can't remember the exact figures I'm, I'm sorry I'm unprepared here uh, something like half an hour or an hour of time to hours of time for the rest of the run so just reducing the load from to that extent means all the other bits of kit in there we can then power down cleanly the head nodes and so on which perhaps we're more concerned about the databases and so on um, I mean all this stuff can be restored from backup but um, it, from another building but um, when the power comes back on, it's preferable that you can turn it on and it comes up cleanly. Prior to the refurbishment of the room, um, the power usage effectiveness of the room was uh, in the order of 2.3, I think it was, which means that for every unit of electricity um, doing what we would consider useful work, like computing, on top of that, we were spending another 1.3 units keeping the room cool. So it, it's, it's very wasteful, it was very wasteful more than half the electricity going in the room wasn't doing what we would consider useful work. So um, one uh, revolutionary cooling system later and the power usage effectiveness is down to, uh, I think it's about 1.25. So one unit of for every one unit of electricity doing work, we're only spending a quarter of a unit keeping the room cool. Because um, um, this is completely untrained uh, observation, but I've been mm -hmm. in one or two machine rooms, mostly in TV stations, they tend to be like ice boxes, but in there it just seems like a, for a fairly normal temperature. Well, we can take you through the hot aisle because the room is, is uh, laid out two, two racks of computers with doors sealing the, the aisle down the middle. And the higher pressured cooler air, although it's not particularly cold, as you said, is what's circulating the outside. Because it's slightly higher pressure, because of the fans at the end of the room, it gets pushed through and dragged through by the fans in the, in the compute nodes and, and everything anyway. Um, and into the hot aisle where it is considerably warmer. Um, and I know it's, this isn't going to register on your film, but we can go through and you can, Let's you, go can have a look. you can sweat if you want, you know, can focus on your forehead. Um, <laughs> um, so that's where the heat is. It's contained in the hot aisle and it's then taken away. Um, and all around the, uh, the room, I'll point them out to you, there are pressure and temperature sensors. Um, so we can tell uh, if, well, in fact, a lot of the time it's done automatically. If, uh, someone does a lot of work. I mean, typically the clusters are running pretty much full tilt, so it, it's fairly consistent. But uh, if they say, let's say they weren't, and someone starts running jobs uh, which generate more heat, the system will pick this up from the temperature sensors in the hot aisle, and the fans will be ramped up slightly to push more um, cooler air in at high pressure to push it over to well, the Does that air. just come from outside then, ambient air? Is it filtered? And um, it's um, most of the time we use. Uh, free cooling the, the temperature in this country being what it is nine months of the year we don't have to to condition it at all uh, so it's only really in the the, the, the summer months on particular on summer days i should say because it, it it's because it's constantly monitoring itself come night time uh, we probably don't need to, to condition it and there, there are chilly units on the roof um, but that's why part of the reason it's uh, the power usage effectiveness is now so good because we're not doing unnecessary chilling. Um, I mean, it would be nice if we could use that heat, but it's an old building and 
you know, we, we have to work with what we have. And so here we go, here's a pump set. Uh, so I think that's a pressure sensor there. Um, so we have these every few racks. If you want to comment on this, do it. So we're going into the hot aisle now. Lots of noise and heat. And there's sensors from there, on there. I don't know if you can see sweat developing on my forehead to indicate that it is actually pretty warm in here. Yeah, it's very warm. Okay. <laughs> but it, there was a fair amount of tuning when the system went in and learning how um, temperature and pressure fluctuations work and so on. But now it, it's pretty automatic, to be honest. Um, as I say, someone starts running jobs, more temperature, the fans at the end. So we've now got three fans going. Like an aircraft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can, you know, feel the, feel the blast. 